guys, today I'm just going to be spending most of today on a bunch of clay pieces for a gargoyle piece that I want to make for a tutorial. So I'm kind of like halfway done with all the legs. I've finished a decent amount of the face. I've got it covered up because I'm waiting on the horns to finish baking so I can add them to the face. So I'm, I'm pretty caught up with it, but we'll still probably spend most of the day working on this. Now one thing that's really fun about this piece is when I release the tutorial, I'm also going to be releasing a gargoyle pattern, but working on it, and I finally made a plush version of the pattern. So when this comes out, this is what it'll look like if you use the plush head pattern and the feet pattern with it, but you can also just kind of cut that off and add your clay pieces. So I think when I come out with more patterns, I'm going to have them where you can make solid plush ones and then you can also add your clay pieces so i'm going to make them very versatile so this one was a pretty complex pattern i'm really happy with it the only wires in it right now are for the wings but if you wanted to you could add wires to the legs just to make it stand up more but he does hold his position pretty well but yeah um i still need to finish the digital files for it. i'm going to work on that at the end of this week um need to get this piece done and everything like that. The one that's going to be an art doll is actually going to be a copper patinaed uh, themed gargoyle. So it's going to be really different. I'm not going to go super gothic or anything like that. I'm going to try and make it look like a really old copper piece that's patinaed and it's going to be interesting. I've been wanting to do that kind of like coloring theme on a piece for a while and I figured a gargoyle would work really well for it. Anyways, I need to get these clay feet, some hands, and some horns in the oven for a pre-bake, and then once they're out of the oven, I can start working on them again. So, kind of on a break right now. So I probably have roughly about 30 minutes until I can start working on my clay again, so I'm probably gonna grab something to eat. I need to take pictures of this guy. He is a commission. I made another Palumu from Monster Hunter. He came out a little bit bigger than the previous one, but I think he came out really cute. Got his wings and everything like that. I also did his tail different in the first one, which I made a tutorial of. Um, I used felt, but I ended up using the same type of fabric that his body's made out of, just gray, and then stitching in the shape of his scales. So he's a lot softer in that spot. But yeah, I'm going to take some photos, see if the buyer is happy with it, and hopefully we will get him shipped out soon. Okay, so I'm almost done. I've got the hands finished. It came out really good, and I'm really happy with the back feet. It's just something about them that look really cool, and I'm really happy with them. So all of those are good, and we're almost done with the head, but I needed to do a pre-bake because when I was working on it this was how flush it was against the glass container so I couldn't work behind the horns so I just kind of finished the front of them and then they decided that I'd do a bake take them off and now we can work on the back of the head finishing this up and I'll probably extend the clay a little bit so it'll be easier to connect to the body later so we're almost done with everything So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is, because I'm a little worried with how strong this portion is where the horns are connected, I think I'm going to add some bands going all the way around. So I'm going to start on the back of the horns, figure that out. I might add those bands or um, I might not. I might just thicken up the horns right there. I just want to make sure that they're not fragile because I made them kind of thin because they're mostly uh, foil. And I did get a little bit of a crack right on this one when working on it, so I'll have to cover that up anyways and thicken up that spot. He likes to rock. <laughs> so yeah, lately I've been working on a lot of large pieces, and I think I need to probably slow down on the large pieces and start on some smaller ones. So I think once we're done with him, I think I'm going to move on to making a couple smaller projects uh, and filling the shop with some small, cute, kind of uh, easily priced things because uh, not everyone can afford my big pieces, so I need to start putting out some smaller ones. I've been slowly working on getting some snakes going, but um, 
I really need to just kind of get caught up on this and then dive into finishing up the shop update because I kind of put it off until I get done with all of this because obviously like this big project is a lot more fun than making a bunch of little things even though the little things are really cute. Yeah, I think I'm just going to thicken up the bases of the horns. I don't think I'm going to add the uh, bands that I was thinking, mainly because like his design is um, all copper. So if I was to add like jewelry and decorative stuff to him, it would kind of get lost in it because he's like one giant piece of jewelry pretty much. So I think I'm just going to thicken these up. And call it good. So I want them detailed but I don't want to add detail that's gonna just not even get noticed because it's just so busy. So another reason I've been just really busy is I've been trying to get like really caught up so that I could actually take a week off. Uh, Michael is taking off a week for his birthday. He's got hours available at work so he's going to take a week off and I would like to not have to work the entire time he's home. I would like to have it where we could do some stuff. Also, um, that Saturday, the start of his uh, uh, vacation, I mean, we're staying home, we're not going anywhere. It's still a vacation though. But the start of it, I'm going to get my final uh, vaccine and I'm probably not going to feel too great. I felt a little like, meh the first vaccine so I'm pretty sure that I'll be one of those people that like gets a slight fever and feels sick until like it's run its course so I'm just gonna be prepared to feel like I have the flu for like three of the days <laughs> and I definitely don't want to work when I feel like that also another thing I want to work on when I take a week off with Michael is I want to get a lot more painting done on this piece. I've been working on it here and there at night and I've been trying to finish the shell. So all of this is still kind of wet, but I really want to dive in so I can start on the hermit crab. One thing kind of cool about the shell that I'm doing is, I don't know if it'll show up on camera too well, but the inside coloring, I have a metallic kind of sheen type paint added to it. So, like, in, in person, it does this nice metallic-y thing when you walk by it, but I don't know if I can catch it on camera. Uh, just trying to make it look more like the inside of a shell, because they tend to have that kind of, like, metal-y look to them sometimes. But yeah, it's coming out really good, but I just need more time to work on it, because there's a lot of little details in it, and right now I'm just working on one big detail. Of the painting. You got a toy? Oh, you got a toy? Oh, come here. Yeah, let me have it. Let me have it. Oh, get it. Oh, yeah, get it. Oh, 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 yeah, shake it. <laughs> oh, pull. So I don't know if anyone knows this video game. It's an old PlayStation 2 game. When I was little, I used to play it all the time. It was Dark Cloud 2, and they had these little frog characters that had wings, and I absolutely was obsessed with them to the point where I had a plush frog that I made wings and attached it to, even though it was a bullfrog and these were just like actual normal frogs that weren't chubby. But I want to do my own little cute variation of it, in the game, they didn't have front legs, so mine's going to have normal front legs, and they're just going to have wings on the back. And I might change up a few things, add some markings and stuff, but I just really wanted to do a winged frog. So I'm going to make a couple small ones for the shop. And um, if they do well, we'll do some different color variations and stuff. I know, I know, I need to finish the snakes, but 
They're taking a while because I gotta do all the resin heads. I'm at that phase where I'm just trying to pour the heads and get them all ready and then I can paint them all at once. So I do have some extra time and I figured let's get a little bit of work done. So I haven't started on the clay pieces for this, but I do want to start on sewing everything together. And I am going to do a tutorial on this because I thought it would be really cute. So I need to make sure to film at least the sewing for one of them. I still have some sewing that I need to get done on the gargoyle piece, but I kind of wanted to take a break on it. Okay, so it's the following day. I did not get a lot of sewing done yesterday, but I got a decent amount. And today I'm gonna finish the little wings that we have for my little flying frogs. I got one done for the tutorial. That way I don't have to worry about filming it for the tutorial right now. But uh, we're gonna be working on that and then getting a little bit of the sewing done for my gargoyle piece. Oh, I realized watching the footage while I was editing this vlog that this does look like a real skull kind of so if anyone is interested this is made out of quartz or stone or something like that it is not real <laughs> that would be a little bit weird <laughs> having a real skull around your neck but yeah it's just made out of stone so if anyone's interested in that but anyways let me show you guys what i'm doing to sew the wings basically here um this is what I originally did. I sewed the two layers together and flipped it, and this is what I'm going to be doing. So what I'm gonna do is I found out that using my backing fabric, which it's not really fabric, it's more paper, and sketching out the lines that I wanna sew on here, pinning it onto that, and then sewing through, um, and then you just remove this once you're done sewing it. So that's what I'm gonna end up doing. Um, before I used to sketch out the lines directly on the fabric, but the problem with that is unless you get directly on it or you use something that's easy to wash off, you're going to have lines drawn on your fabric. This is a good way to keep it from looking all like sketched on. Okay, I finally got everything pinned together. Let's get started. I'm so glad these are tiny, because otherwise they take forever. The only bad thing about them being so tiny is they're really hard to like hold on to while sewing. Also, it's really hard to put the pins in the fabric to hold it steady without having to later pull them out. It'd be so much easier if I could just leave them in and then pull them out after, but they're in the way. I'll get one of these done real quick and then I'll show you how to pull off the backing fabric. Oh, I, I call it backing fabric, but it's a uh, stabilizing fabric. Okay, so here's a wing with the stabilizer fabric in place. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rip to where I get to a seam and then you just kind of rip down along the length of it. Sometimes it'll split but you can go in and get the little pieces later. But it works really well if you have a pretty tight stitch. So like I normally have just one of the tightest stitches when I'm sewing anyways. That way it creates a nice clean line. And just rip it away. Super easy. This one's not wanting to rip as clean as the first one that I did for the tutorial, but eventually you just get everything off of it. Most of it rips off pretty simple. And there. And now I just need to cut off all the extra little strings that I have. And I've got my little wing for my froggy. Oh, my workspace is such a mess right now. <laughs> Just got everything kind of laying out. I've been working on painting stuff for the gargoyle. 
and it is taking me forever, but I think I finally have like a copper patinaed look. There's so many layers to painting it to make it look like this, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I still need to add some more details to it, but right now what I'm going to do, I moved the rug out of the way. I need to take some photos. So I have pictures of all the pattern pieces for the gargoyle. I'm going to lay them out and take some photos so that I can have them on the computer. And then um, I'm going to work on making the digital files for the patterns. So I need to lay them out and get them all nice and even. I've got them on 8 by 10 so I know how to break them up so they're easy for people to print. And I can size them on the computer a lot easier this way. So I think that will be like four pages right there. And then I think I kind of broke it up into having them all on four pages. So there's a, there's a lot of uh, pattern pages for this pattern. <laughs> okay, I got everything on the computer now. All my photos are taken and I just need to size my canvas so we can get started on our patterns. That is the size I need. Okay. Let's do... I'm trying to see which one. That one's too big, so... I think this one's right. Yeah, okay. So now I just need to fit it. So I guess while I'm working on this, I can give you guys a little bit of an update with the pigeons. I had a little bit of a scare with them. Um, I was concerned that I would need to catch one of them. The male showed up like a day or two ago to sit on the eggs and one of his eyes was swollen shut and I don't know what happened to him. He didn't look too bad. You could tell he wasn't feeling great. But one of his eyes was swollen shut, and I was like, oh, now I gotta try and catch him and, like, see if I can help him. So I was debating on that, but I gave it a day or two, and he eventually opened his eye again. So whatever happened to his eye, I think he's okay now. But I was really concerned for a while because I was afraid that I would have to catch him and scare him off the nest, and because I don't even know if the eggs are fertile, so... I'd rather take care of the pigeons that are currently sitting on the nest versus like the eggs themselves because the last ones were infertile. But luckily he is okay and I don't have to worry about doing that now because I would definitely try to help him. I've kind of gotten attached to them. They're very cute. I like watching them. Kind of like my unofficial pets. <laughs> but yeah, other than that, um, I've kind of named them. I decided to finally give them names. Um, I decided that she is going to be Becky and he is going to be Hey Hey. So if you guys know, those are both um, weird bird characters in Disney movies. <laughs> I thought they kind of fit the personalities a little bit. I really hope that their eggs this time around will hatch. I really want to see some babies. Okay, so I think I'm going to call it for today because I have almost finished eight pages, which is a lot. I made a few changes in the layout, so I'll probably have maybe one or two more pages to work on that I originally thought I did. So I have no idea how many pages this pattern PDF is going to have by the time I'm done with it. But whenever we have that gargoyle piece come out, this will be available. I'm going to make sure to have everything kind of release at the same time. So keep an eye out for that. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe to all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.